Okay, so few days back, I received a call from a distant ICU, and uh, they had a patient of polytrauma who underwent clinectomy a few days back, and it was in the ICU for four or five days, and uh, he was off sedation uh, for last two days, and uh, this morning uh, they did a blood gas, and they were not able to find out the cause of such a deranged blood gas. So the blood gas they sent to me was of pH. Somewhere around 6.7. Uh, PO2 was fine. PCO2 was somewhere around 36 or 40. I remember. Biocarb were 5 or 6. Very, very low. The potassium was 3 or 3.1. So it was hypokalemia. Glucose was also low. So basically, it was iron ion gap metabolic acidosis with uh, uh, hypokalemia. Lactates were normal. So I asked that what are the vitals of the patients? So they sent me a picture of the monitor and also told that uh, the, uh, the vitals are pretty okay. Uh, heart rate is somewhere around 80, saturations are fine. The BP is also fine. So I asked them whether how the patient is pouring urine or how, how is the creatine urine. So they told that it is pouring good amount of urine and the creatine is also normal. The hematocrit in the blood sample was somewhere around 27. So it was it turned out to be HP of 8 or 9 between. So I asked what is the HP, they said 12. So I asked, and lactates were also normal in that blood gas. So I asked them uh, what is the alcoholic history of this patient. So it was not known. So we presume that it can be alcoholic ketoacidosis. So and propofol. He was on propofol two days back. For the last two, three days, he was on propofol infusion and now it has been stopped. Since last day, he was in, not on any propofol. So I advised them, said, please repeat a blood gas. So the reason uh, he asked that why we should repeat a blood gas. So what you are suspecting. So I told them, first you repeat the blood gas, then we'll discuss the reason. And when they repeat the blood gas, it was almost normal sort of PS7.4, PO2 was fine, the PCO2 was also okay. The bicarbs came out to be 23, 24. The sodium potassium also came into their normal range. Lactates were fine. So then he asked why you suspected and advised to repeat a blood gas. So I told them two, three scenario. First, Initially, when there is a severe high and gap metabolic acidosis, you don't find hypokalemia. You usually find hyperkalemia. So it was the first clue. Second, the patient was absolutely normal hemodynamically. So a patient with a pH of 6.7 will not have this much hemodynamically stability. He must be somewhere around hemodynamically unstable. There can be tachycardia, there can be hypotension, something with normal lactates. Then he was also pouring good amount of urine. Alcoholic history was not known, so it, it was not uh, alcoholic ketoacidosis. Also, lactates were also normal. So it was not fitting into the clinical picture of the patient, but it was fitting into the picture of excessive heparin in the syringe. So I told them this could be one of the reasons because of excessive heparin in the syringe, the patient may have this, much, uh, this blood gas. So what you can get, excessive heparin can lead to uh, severe acidosis because heparin per se is an acid. It can lead to hypokalemia. Then because of the heparin dilutes the sample, so you will get hypoglycemia uh, and also low sodium sort of things you can find. So which later on get corrected when you did a routine blood gas with a normal blood gas uh, like that. So the learning point which I want to tell each student and staff or nursing healthcare professionals that whenever you see do a blood gas, always anticipate what we are going to do in a blood gas, uh, what we are going to get in that blood gas, what we are anticipating. And if you can't do that, you can't predict that. Whenever you see a report, always correlate with the clinical status of the patients. A patient with a pH of 6.7 will not have such hemodynamic stability. Initially, I thought of PRIS, propofol related infusion syndrome, but it was stopped two days back. The patient is pouring good amount of urine. There is no hypotension. So it was not fitting into that picture. So whenever you see a blood gas, always correlate with the patient condition. And if you are finding a mismatch between them, always repeat uh, the blood gas to be double sure that we are dealing actually with a problem in the blood gas. So uh, I will share both the blood gas before and after the first one and second one after the end of this video. You can go and have a look on that. But I hope this was helpful and do read more about it. 
what heparin can cause uh, excessive heparin co- can cause in a ebg report excessive heparin in a, it was not a dilutional uh, one because suppose if the patient has a dilutional blood sample like saline is going on or dextrose is going on then you will not find severe acidosis you can have low sodium you can have low potassium if the dextrose containing fluid is there you can have hyperglycemia but you will not get ph of 6.7 dilutional blood sample will not alter the ph of the solution uh, that much blood that much so it is due to excessive heparin so go and read uh, just go browse what changes excessive heparin can do in a blood gas so many of the things i have told you in the video i hope this was u- useful and do read more about it thank you